Before this video starts, I just want to say that we've already done a full review of the Infiniti G35 Coupe right here. And also, I've done five things that I love about the Infiniti G35 Coupe right here. So enjoy the video. Please excuse my attire, I'm heading to the gym. This cliff bar is my pre-workout. All right, before I get started, I just want to talk about something. I love this car. This car is my pride and my joy. This car is the reason I get up in the morning. So when I say bad things about it, it's not that I don't like this car or that I'm saying you shouldn't buy this car. This car is awesome. The Infiniti G35 Coupe is amazing. And if you're interested in buying one, I definitely recommend it. But now let's talk about some things that I don't enjoy. Now the first thing that I want to talk about is probably something that I'm going to get some hate on in the comments below, um, but bear with me. My G35 Coupe is an automatic. Yes, take a second to accept that I'm driving an automatic car. I hate the automatic transmission in this car. Not because it's an automatic transmission and so you can't have as much of a like driving experience. That's not it. I accept the fact that it's an automatic. But that being said, there are some things about this transmission that I don't like. Actually, a lot of things. So I'm just gonna give you guys the Spark Notes version. This automatic transmission is shiftable, which is nice, but it's one of the first transmissions offered at like the time to be shiftable. And with that comes a lot of quirks. The car is not finely tuned to shift. So I'm driving, I shift, and then it shifts. I'm driving, I downshift, and then it downshifts. But it has a lot of problems besides taking a while. For example, when you downshift, there is no attempt at a rev match. When you downshift, it shoots it into that gear and you feel the car like bounce backwards because it's now in a way higher rev than it was before. And it makes you feel like you're kind of breaking your car. More onto that breaking your car, when you upshift from second to third gear, there's this bang noise, like this loud bang. Like here, let me see if I can show you guys. All right, so I'm in first gear, second gear. I bring the RPMs up. Do you hear that? Maybe you don't, but inside the car, it's really, really noticeable. It's this loud like bang, like this transmission is slamming it into the next gear and it makes you feel like your car is gonna explode. Honestly, I have no idea why it does that, but it's, it can't be good for the car. So, in conclusion, the automatic transmission in this car is awful, and you should buy a manual version, but still buy this car. Okay, second, this is something that you'll notice as soon as you sit inside the car. Right now, I may look comfortable, and I am. This seat has very nice bolsters, it grips me really well, it honestly feels like a bucket seat, until I rest my head back. Does this look comfortable? Who designed the headrest to be this far from where your head is? When you set your head back, you're not comfortable. I feel like a gangster right now, just riding like far away from the steering wheel. It's not comfortable. Who designed these seats? What was wrong with their neck? The third thing that I wanna talk about is a problem that really stems from the fact that this was a 350Z at heart. And it has the suspension of the 350Z and the problem with that is this is supposed to be a luxury car. I like that it's really sporty. That's not a problem for me. But if you're buying this car when it came out, assuming it would be a luxury car, or if you buy it now, still assuming that it'll be a luxury car, the suspension feels every bump in the road and it doesn't feel very refined. Most of the time when you think of luxury car, you think of like Rolls Royce and it makes you feel like you're driving on a cloud. But this car, you feel every bump. You feel every rock that you go over. And if you're looking for a sports car, that can be a good thing. I like this fact about it. But it annoys me that this car is titled luxury car when the suspension is so hard. Now the next problem is one that you've probably heard before if you've researched the G35, and that's the brakes. This car weighs 3,400 pounds, which is a lot of weight. And the brakes are not big enough to stop it. Yes, they work, but if you're planning on doing like autocross or canyoning, the rotors are way too small and the brakes do not grip well enough. There's not enough feedback in the brake either. All around, this car needs to have a big brake kit upgrade as soon as you buy it if you plan on doing anything real. 
the brakes feel soft. They don't feel like the brakes that should be on a, a sports car. And I do realize that this car had the option to come with Brembo brakes if you bought the performance package in the manual version. It did come with Brembo brake calipers. And I've never driven one of those, so I can't vouch for how well they work. But as far as the standard brakes that come on this car and that are come standard on all 2005 and up, they're not very good, especially if you plan on doing autocross or canyoning with this car. Now the final thing that I want to talk about is something that you really won't notice if you're just test driving this car. But I've owned this car for a while and I realize how much of an annoyance this can be. And that's the fact that there's no trunk open button on the trunk or near the trunk. In the later year versions, I think it's 2006 and up, they did offer a button on the uh, left tail light that would open the trunk. But for this year, so 2003, 2004, and I believe 2005, there's no button to open the trunk except for on the keys and inside the car. So if you're outside the car and you're carrying some groceries, there's no button that you can just press with your finger to open the trunk. You have to set down your groceries, grab your key, or have somebody else open the trunk. And just after owning this car, I realize how much of an issue it is. So just to recap, the transmission sucks, the suspension sucks, the brakes suck, the seats suck, and there's no trunk open button. But this is still an amazing car. Don't get me wrong. This car is quick, it's reliable, it's affordable, it's anything that you could want from your first sports car. So definitely look into this car if you can overlook those bad parts. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like this video, subscribe, follow me on Instagram and Twitter and Snapchat, and I'll see you guys next time.